what's going on guys Tony here CCXRC and today on the bench I have the Red Cat Kaiju. Yes it's been out for about nine months now almost a year and I am just now getting one and unboxing it. You guys have been asking for it. It's been the hot thing this year. They've been hard to get your hands on. Uh, they're in stock now. They're not going to stay in stock for a long time. Uh, this one comes from BitGo Hobbies guys. If you uh, are looking for a Red Cat supplier, BitGo Hobbies, check them out. I've got links in the description below. Also got the Gen 8 from them. And so I want to show you guys this. And uh, let's take a look at it. It's going to be amazing. 399 6S power. I've been watching videos on it for a long time. And super excited to get my hands on one and get this thing jumping and doing some tricks for you guys. Now I do want to say, if you're coming here and you're looking at this and you want an indestructible truck, this isn't going to be it. There isn't one, especially when you're doing 6S bashing. Uh, it's really hard until you put in lots of really expensive upgrades and even then they can still break. So it really comes down to how do they break, where do they break, and is it easy to get parts and is it cost effective. So Red Cat fully supports these things. They're here in the USA. Yeah, let's open this up, take a look at it because it's an amazing 8th scale monster truck. Let's do it. All right, give you a quick run around the box. We're seeing Hobbywing brushless motor, brushless ESC, uh, 2100 kV, and this is 150 amp ESC, 399. Remember that, guys. What you're getting in this, just the electronics alone, there's some money right there. You get front and rear LED lights, white in the front, red in the rear, and a wheelie bar that has four positions of adjustments. That's awesome. Again, waterproof and 1 8 scale 4x4. Four four. And uh, cordless servo as well high torque servo which is nice I'll leave this here for a second for you guys to pause if you want to look at it in more detail alrighty let's free this thing from the box I love the wheel detail here with the red cat in it that is so sweet peel off the cover pull out the controller alright so what do you get with the Red Cat Kaiju other than this awesome looking blue short bedded Datsun looking truck. Well, get this manual, gives you all the information about how to drive it. Definitely should look through this thing, uh, especially if you're new to RC. It tells you about the programming of your ESC and things like that if you need to know. You get a sticker sheet, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Finally, some new Red Cat logo stuff, as well as other cool little emblems. I dig it. Wrench for taking off your wheel. And some Allen wrenches. And another little manual here for your ESC. Yeah, forward reverse with brake. 0% drag. Max brake is set to 25%. And you have a uh, three volt cell LiPo cutoff. So, Nice. Definitely something to hold on to, but it is also hobby wing, so you may have a program card that'll work with it. The controller is an RCR 2CE, and it has the little flip top here with your basic control functions that you find on a lot of these uh, basic controllers. And so you've got your on-off switch, steering and throttle trims, and your steering dual rate, which is how much steering you have. It's actually set to about 75% right now out of the box, but you can turn that up, get full steering. I have a feeling this is going to steer like a monster. We may not need it all. Then you've got throttle reverses and a bind button. It takes four AA batteries, which it does not come with. You will have to supply them on your own. Pretty standard fare. All right. This. <laughs> this is what we want to see right here. Man, does it look nice. I haven't actually even seen one in person, so how crazy is that? Rolls real nice. Go ahead and take off one of these wheels, show you guys what we're dealing with here as far as your uh, hexes. And get a quick look at that and a nice close up of the wheel, which will be nice. Get it right up here for you to look at. It does kind of look a little bit like the Proline Bad Lines, kind of like what you also see on maybe an Outcast, but this is a very aggressive tread. Again, it has that cool Red Cat 
lettering in the wheel here. It's just a sticker. You could remove it if you want. I think it looks amazing and we'll be leaving it in. It looks really cool when it's driving. All right, let's take a look in even closer here. Got metal, large shaft coming out here for your wheel, for your hub. And a very large 17 millimeter hex as well. Very, very beefy. Uh, you can also see up here your upper arm and your lower arm, which we'll see a little easier with the body off. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's zoom back out. Take off the body, which has these nice new clips on it. I love when people do this. They're so easy to lose. I have lost so many. I'm always carrying extras with me. But all the different trucks have different size openings on the body post mounts here. And so it's just a little bit of a pain. All right. First thing I'm noticing really nice is when you get in here, your electronics have a nice cover on it. Um, and this is just kind of elastic. Keeps all the junk out of the inside of the vehicle. Very nice. All right, we were dealing with the wheel before. Let's get back down here and let's look at the front end of this truck. There it is. <laughs> all right, so nice metal bodied shocks. Again, $3.99, you guys. So you're getting these nice metal bodied shocks. Does have plastic caps, but these are metal in here. Yeah, and threaded so you can make adjustability there for your preload. Uh, down here at the bottom, you've got little um, basically braces to protect your shock from things hitting it and snapping it off there. Um, you have your upper A arm is really like a turnbuckle system here. So you can make adjustments to the camber of your wheels. Uh, in the rear, you have turnbuckles as well. So you can do your toe in, toe out adjustments with that. And they're nice and thick. So it's reading about a 4.5. So somewhere between four and five millimeter thickness here. Nice and thick. Probably as you get to the rod, it's more of a four where it's threaded. Um, but these are adjustable, but nice and beefy for you as well. The shock shafts in here are fairly large as well. So you got a four millimeter shaft in there, which is really cool to see um, because you're going to be jumping big air with this thing. You're going to want to have a nice beefy shock inside of there. It does have metal. Um, looks like CV style with a dog bone on this end here. Yeah, it looks like CVDs up front. It's hard to tell in there, so you have to look at your manual. Uh, I'm just giving you kind of a quick once over what I'm seeing, um, but you can always do more research. Does have a servo saver tucked up right under here for adjustability. You can twist this and uh, be able to adjust that. Uh, flipping it onto the bottom here, we can also see the servo horn. It's just a plastic servo horn that'd be easy to swap out. It's right here on the bottom, easily accessible. Um, you can see the bottom of the chassis here as well while we're looking at the bottom. Uh, it kind of raises itself here in the, in the middle, drops this down, gives it that nice monster truck stance to it. Really thick lower A arms. Um, going back to the uppers, the one thing that I have seen break is right up here on these uppers, um, which look really easy to replace. Uh, you take out a small little screw that's like sets uh, a pin in here, kind of captures it, holds it in. You'd slide that out then and be able to replace it pretty easily. So that's what I was saying. Things do break. Um, arms are one thing when you're bashing. If you land weird, come down boom, right onto one wheel, something will usually give. Um, there's some flexibility here, but you do have a metal rod driving into this one. And so that it has a potential of breaking. Um, I've seen it break twice. And um, I know RC driver on his that broke. Um, and I just saw uh, Pilot Ryan said he broke his uh, upper A arm. So I don't know which one he broke. But so I've heard of two instances of it. But uh, yeah, looking at the top here, one of my favorite things to see the battery tray has Velcro straps in here. 
Um, it can hold up to a 6S battery. Lots of room in here. There's padding front and rear. Um, so pretty, pretty nice setup. Um, up underneath of here, you can take out this pin. You can flip this open. Easy access to your receiver in here if you need to be able to switch anything out. I like this over the screw closed ones. Super simple. The motor, that big 2100 kV motor in here, eight scale system, so nice. Hobby wing, everything's routed in here real nice. And you've got that 150 amp ESC, uh, Red Cat branded, but it is their WP BL150 ready to run. You can see here the waterproof on off switch sitting right on top of that 25 kg high torque servo. Um, this is the Hexfly servo in there. I've used these before. They do really well, actually. So I don't foresee really needing to swap that out. Um, if I do swap it out, I'll probably put in something really crazy killer for a monster like this. Um, I'd probably be leaning towards something like a Reese Raw 500. That'll just throw these wheels all over the place with no problem. Um, but all of this is very accessible. It does take a Dean's T-plug connector, as you can see right here. And they've got this already made so you can run it on 3S, 4S, whatever battery you might have. Um, you can run it on that. So uh, with a single Dean's. Um, I got some Gen Zates batteries, 3S, dual 3S I can run. So I can actually unplug this and run it 6S like that, which is nice. Stick it in there. And yeah, so that is a quick look here. Going around to the rear, you can see the wheelie bar, the adjustability of it right there. You've got four different spots. It's set for really tall stand up wheelies right now. I mean, that's a really, really high arc on it. <laughs> You'd be standing upright, which would look really cool. So I think I'm going to leave it that way, at least while we test it out. In the rear, you don't have adjustability for your uh, toe in, toe out, but you do still have the same A-arm set up here uh, in the rear, the upper A-arms. And yeah, man, the suspension feels really good. Nice and slow, very dampened, wow. I think it's gonna be amazing landing. Gonna get this wheel set back on here. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh man, I like a truck set up like that. Look at that slow rebound on there. Just soak it up. So it's got some thick oil in here. Be curious, I'll have to find out what they're running. I really like it on this. All right, let's put this wheel back on. Cinch it down real good. Yeah, that's nice. All right, so adjustable body post here. You pull this pin, you can raise it up and down as you want. But man, it's set up normal, like a lot of things you see. One of the cool things is it's, it does use all plastic braces here. They're really thick X braces in the back for your shock tower. Uh, but it's got also this, you know, you've seen it in a, another type of vehicle where it's one molded piece. So these are screwed on here, but they're kind of a brace. So instead of coming down to the middle where you've got all this other stuff or running a chassis brace across, they're stiffening it up right there, which is really cool. So gives it a really nice stance, really nice plastic. Everything's recessed. It is a really good looking truck for the money, you guys. And so I will get this out there and I will get it bashing for you very soon. I don't know anything else. I'm probably forgetting something. I always do forget something uh, in every unboxing <laughs> that you guys want to know about. The bumper um, up front here. It's got little shackles. That's where the lights are. The body is kind of rigid. So we'll see what the durability of this is like. Man, is that smooth or what? Look at how slowly that just rebounds. And it's got nice, I mean, it takes some push to get that compression. 
So that'll help with some of the setup of these out of the box with these bashers. They just chassis slap so easy. This one's going to take a little bit to get it to hit all the way down. That's taking some crazy pressure. But, you know, this is one of my more favorite actually looking. Now that I've seen it in person, I was kind of iffy about the body. Um, I'm still a little bit, but the stance of it just looks so good. I do like the design on here with the stickers on the top. That little cutting of it to let the blue show through. Well done, Red Cat. So this is uh, an original to Red Cat. It uses, I guess, a few um, things that you may have seen or ideas from other trucks that you may have seen, but this has been redesigned. It is an exclusive to Red Cat. Um, they've put their stamp on it, basically, and um, they have parts availab availability, blue little availability for it. So um, definitely look into it, guys. Watch some videos. You'll be seeing them here. Going to be hitting my big ramps with it for sure. Uh, see if we can't get it out to the BMX trails, do a bash there. I'm going to be trying it on 4S first. Um, you know, even with my other cars that I have that run 6S, not to, to name jump to other brands, uh, so I won't say brands, but on 6S for a 6S vehicle, uh, or even 8S on an 8S vehicle, that's when I really start to see issues uh, happen. So I'm going to start at 4. We will run it on 6S as well, guys. Um, but the videos I've seen it on, running on 4S kind of look like the sweet spot for me for speed, bashing, um, flipping, tricks, all of that. Because this is like a stunt vehicle. That's why that wheelie bar is set to ride so high. Um, as this thing's meant to do stunts and all that. And on 6S, it's ballistic. Um, but I'm not like super speed guy anyway. If I can get the big air that I like with control on 4S, I'll be happy. On some of them, I need the 6S in order to get the control in the air uh, to get a flip around. Um, but what I've seen on 4S, this thing looks like magic to me. It looks perfectly set for it. So we'll give that a try first, and then we'll bump it up. First runs you'll see will be 4S runs. Uh, but also when I've seen it break, it's been on 6S because you're delivering more power and you're doing more flips. And if you're getting that rotation going, that mass is just getting more inertia. So when you hit, that's when he can pop things. So in order for a little bit of longevity with it, I'm going to go ahead and order upper A-arms now just to have on hand. Um, but I'm going to try to make it, make it last without it. Show you guys I can bash. How's that? <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in for another video. Let me know what you think of this thing. Be sure to check out BitGo Hobby, guys. Uh, show them some love. Um, and uh, if you use the links in there, it does help the channel. They let them know that uh, you're coming from CCXRC. So um, if you're looking at getting one of these for Christmas, it's in that price range. Perfect present price range for a really killer truck that's nice and large and Everything about it feels very quality and looks very quality to me. Um, so, oh, that's something I didn't mention here. It does have the metal aluminum hinge pin retainers up here and in the rear. So you can see the little metal that they've got in here. Keep those things nice and tight in there, not breaking out. Um, pretty standard now in a lot of these, so... Yeah, anyway guys, thanks for tuning in. Have fun RCing. We'll catch you next time.